A couple of videos ago, I shared with you that I redeemed my money from my BPI Peso Bond Fund after having invested this since 2017. In those 7 years, I had a total return of over 17%, so not bad, pretty much what you would expect from a typical peso bond fund. But when I was looking at the numbers further, looking at the official report from ALFM, the annualized returns of the BPI ALFM peso bond fund stands at 2.48% per annum in the last 5 years. I thought to myself, I don't know if that's something to be happy about, especially in light of high interest savings account that are coming out left and right right now. So it got me thinking, are peso bond funds still relevant? Should they still have a room in your portfolio? This is what we'll look to cover in this video. So enough of this intro and let's go. But before anything, if you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Mark. It's nice to meet you. In this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. So you guys have actually asked me to talk about this for a while now. You've been asking me about GoTime, CIMB Bank. So these are all the new digital banks out there that are offering high interest for opening a savings account. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I've been shying away from this simply because I really don't know too much about the savings account. I mean, when I was growing up, and I think I'm older than a lot of you on this channel, savings account were just not a sexy product. I mean, in the past, a savings account will only earn you about 0.0625% per annum. Sometimes it's 0.01% per annum. So it's really not something to get excited about and something that wasn't on my radar. But now with these offers from these new banks, they are offering anywhere from 35 to 6.5% per annum. So this is already comparable and maybe even bettering regular peso bond funds out there. Now before getting into my experience and talking about the different offers, let's first step back and understand why a peso bond fund was relevant in the first place. Bond funds were a middle ground between your savings account and with a higher risk equities fund or stocks or more aggressive investments that you would make. So what I put in bond funds would be money that I would need access to. Perhaps there's a business investment that I need to make or just for an emergency. So bond funds for me have played the role of sort of a glorified savings account. Okay, so let's now move on to these digital banks now. So just to name a few, there is Tonic, there is CIMB Savings Bank, there's Maya, there's C-Bank, there's GoTime, there's Discartec. So I won't actually go into the offers of each one. I mean, you can easily Google these and look at the offers in their apps. But again, basically, they are offering anywhere from 35 to 6.5%. So seeing that flashy 6.5%, I went with the highest one, with Discartec. It's not exactly a name we're familiar with, but they are actually in partnership with RCBC. So again, this would be my first experience with this high-interest savings account. So around the first part of September, I finally downloaded the app. I went through the usual KYC, Know Your Customer process, and found myself depositing 1,000 pesos in my new Discartec savings account. So after having deposited this amount, I was going to wait until the end of the month where in the interest of 6.5% on a per annum basis will be credited to my account at the end of the month. So because of these gamified features, I ended up with a total balance of 1,001 pesos and 25 centavos. So in October 1, I checked this and the interest that the app easily displays says that I earned a total of 2 pesos and 54 centavos. So that wasn't bad. At least I could see what I earned very easily. But when I was computing for the figures, 2 pesos and 54 centavos doesn't seem like it's going to add up to 6.5% on a per annum basis. I mean, actually, this is the thing that I wanted to share with you. I'm not entirely sure how you go about the computation. Since I invested in September 11th, I'm only covering two-thirds of the month. So I think the interest rate is based on that. But from my computations, I think that's just going to be earning a little over 3%. So when you click on the activity tab, it also says that I had been charged a tax interest rate of 0.51 centavos. Anyway, I'm sharing these with you. Again, not being an expert on this. But based on my learnings, I'm actually trying to figure out if I didn't qualify for the 6.5% per annum interest rate. I mean, I tried to read the fine print, read the FAQs. Is there a step that I missed? I'm still not sure until now, but I guess that's the thing with these promotional offers. A lot of them are gamified and there are other qualifiers that you have to meet. 
from my understanding, I didn't qualify for the 6.5% per annum. Maybe I missed a step. Maybe there are additional KYC procedures that I need to do. So while this is better than an old school regular savings account, my experience here shows that there are actually a lot of fine print that you would have to look into. One other thing that I came across is that the limit is actually just 50,000 pesos. And I guess one more thing that I wanted to point out was that these published per annum interest rates are actually not yet net of taxes. When comparing this to the published performance of a bond fund, what's listed there is actually net of taxes, net of charges already. So in my case, the BPI ALFM Peso bond fund in the last five years, its annualized performance of 2.48% are already net of taxes. So these are things that you also have to consider when you find these savings account offers from these new banks. So for the savings account, again, the highest is 6.5% for the Discartec app. But I actually found another Philippine-based app where you can earn as much as 8% for your Philippine pesos when you place your money with their product. So 8%, that's actually very exciting. But this time, it's no longer in a savings account. This time, we are actually delving into crypto. But wait, hold on. I know a lot of you are put off by crypto and think that it's highly volatile and fair enough, um, crypto is not for everyone. But this product is not your typical crypto. So with crypto, there's actually a category that's less volatile and more pegged to the traditional currencies. So these are called stable coins. So with stable coins, they are no longer speculative and actually pegged to the currency that they're following. So there are stable coins that are following the US dollar. There are a handful of them. And recently, Coins PH has actually come up with a PHPC coin. So when you exchange your Philippine peso to PHPC, there are of course some very, very minor variances. But for the most part, their performance and movement will be similar to Philippine peso. So yes, the promo that Coins PH is offering is 8% per annum and your interest will also come in the form of additional PHPC. This will be credited on a weekly basis. I've actually started doing this. So sharing here the activity on my Coins PH app, on the week that I had a little over 25,000 pesos, my interest that week was a little over 31 pesos. So for me personally, this is more exciting. This is what I'm looking for. Again, doing the computations, 31 pesos, I think comes out to roughly 6% per annum. But again, as with the savings account, I'm not even sure if I'm doing the math properly. So earlier, I mentioned that for the savings account, what's published as the interest rate is actually not yet net of taxes for PHPC since this is even a newer product. I'm actually also not sure what are the tax implications. So just putting out there that the 8% published may or may not yet be net of taxes. So if you're watching this and you are from CoinsPH, um, kindly let me know in the comment section so that we can get some better clarity on this. The downside though is that when I inquired with CoinsPH, they said that this offer actually has no specific timeline. It could happen that by the time I publish this video, this offer of 8% might already be finished. So again, that's a downside. What I talked about earlier, a lot of these offers from digital banks or in this case, a crypto exchange, they are usually on a promotional setting only. So in conclusion, with these high interest rates that are coming either from a savings account through a new digital bank or in the second case, through crypto, through a stable coin, are bond funds still relevant? For me personally, I would say yes. Even though the annualized performance of bond funds may not seem so high, may not seem so sexy, what you can count on on a peso bond fund is that the annualized performance is actually net of taxes and trust fees already. So yes, bond funds continue to be relevant. And once you're actually through to the usual 90-day holding period, the processing time for you to redeem your money is on the same day as long as you meet the cutoffs. So at the worst case scenario, you may actually have to redeem your money on the next day. So I'm pointing this out because these bond funds pretty much still function similar to cash. In many ways, as I said earlier, it's a glorified savings account comparing it to the promotional offers of the high interest that these apps are giving. Again, there's a lot of fine print and qualifiers before you can actually meet the interest rate that they are publishing. And, and even then, they are still not yet net of taxes. So why not just invest in bonds directly, government bonds or corporate bonds? Well, of course, you're free to do that. 
But of course, the holding period, the maturity, would be over a longer period. Of course, it comes out better to invest in bonds directly if that's your direction and if you have access to them. I guess what I'm talking about here, even for me, would be the typical investor that you don't really want to go through all the prospectus, all the paperwork that you would invest in either government or corporate bonds. So I've always found bond funds a lot more user-friendly, a lot more accessible. So what do you think? Uh, I'm sorry this wasn't too specific on these new digital banks, but I just needed to frame it in the way that I typically see things. Have you tried putting your money in PHPC by CoinsPH? What are the digital banks that you invest in? Do you actually get the interest rate as published? Let me know in the comment section. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing.